making a cooling scarf, cut your fabric across the grain five inches wide by the width of the fabric. And the next thing you're going to do is come over and you're going to want to measure a 42 inch length so you double up your tape measure to 21 it's 21 and 21 is 42 and just cut a little bit off the ends and that way we've got a nice length for the cooling scarf then you take your material open it up right sides together all the way down and just put a couple temporary clips in here to hold this together while we figure out a few measurements so this is just so it doesn't scoot around on us and we get a good lie down on the fabric okay now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold the length of your tube in half and you're going to find the center point of your tube the center point of your strip and then you're going to take a pin and you're going to mark the center point like so so the pin is our center point and then grab two more pins because now we're going to go nine inches either side of that center pin and put another pin in because what we're doing is marking the opening for the tube. We don't want to sew that shut. We want to leave that open so we can fill it. So nine inch from the center here, do the same down here on the other side of your center mark. Find your nine inch, mark it with a pin. And now that you have that marked, what we're going to do is going to be sewing, sewing our ends. We're going to do start at this fold and back tack, slow a slight curve, come up and then three eighths inch away and come to this pin, stop and do a back stitch. Then we're going to cut our threads and move down to the other end and repeat it. We're going to stitch here, back tack, and then come all the way down to the end and curve to the point. Okay. Back tack. Do a slight curve. And then when you come out to the seam, make sure your seam allowance is a 3 8 When you get to your pin, Come on, reverse. Reverse it and then go ahead and cut your threads. You're going to do the same for the other side of the tails. You're going to start where your pin is. Back tack a little to secure it. So 3 8 inch away. And when we get down to the bottom, kind of eyeball it kind of wing it, make a nice little curvy tail, do a backspace there, and cut it. Now we're going to take our scissors and cut the tail portion away, and just so that this curve will lay down nice, just put a few little clips in there. Be careful not to clip into your thread. All right, go down to the other end, clip that off, make a few snips in the curve. Again, don't cut that thread. All right, now we're going to want to turn this right side out, so temporarily remove your center point pin and come down and grab this and whatever point turner of choice you have, if it's a chopstick or an unsharpened pencil, 
Go ahead and turn that right side out. You got a little bit of point here and then that curve there. So that end is done. We're going to come down and pull the other end out. Okay. Get that turned out. Come back and just gently push on your point. You don't want to poke a hole in it. And then do your curve. Lay this out on your machine table, your workspace, and you'll see that this edge that's open here, this is going to be 18 inches open. But what the next couple steps we're going to do is we're going to press this, turn under our 3 inch seam allowance on each side of here, and press that. And then after I'm done pressing, I'm going to come back and we'll go ahead and, and stitch our grooves so we make our pockets. Okay, I've got my uh, tie pressed. Press the corners and when you get up to where that opening is, you turn under your seam allowances on both sides and press that. So then when we're done, all we have to do is top stitch. So we've got these edges all pressed under. And the next thing you want to do is come back and mark where this end started here. Remember this was nine inches away from center. And then go down and mark your other edge for a casing. And that was nine inches away from the center. So doing our modern math here, this whole thing should be 18 inches wide. So what I want you to do is come and divide this into uh, three equal pockets. So 18 would be 6, 12, 18. So starting at the 0, we come up to 6. That's going to be one of your pockets. And on the 6, you go to 12. 12 is going to be the other pocket. And then we have the 18, which is the end. So just to recap, these two here on my fingers, on my pointer fingers, these are the original places where you stopped. Nine inches from center, nine inches from center. So this whole thing is 18. And now we're going to go back and we're going to stitch this shut and every six inches. This shut, this shut, and this shut. So when we're done, we'll have one, two, three pockets. Now we've got our tie with stitching at the zero point. 6, 12, and 18. And each one of these pockets are open at the top. There should be three open pockets and the tails of this should be stitched shut. And when I did my stitching across here, I went up, back, and up to secure it because you don't want those beads popping out. So three pockets, one, two, three, four, stitching across. And next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill these with our dry beads. And I'm going to get them and we'll get this thing done. Now I'd like to show you the beads that we're using for this project. What they are is water beads. And this one is Squishos from Walmart. They carry in stock and online this large 14 ounce container. And it was 1038 for the whole container. And it probably contains more beads than what you will ever use. Probably can make a gazillion out of this whole container. But they also do sell in the store just a smaller package of them if you don't want to invest in making a whole lot of them. And so uh, these are from Walmart. I like them because they have the nice bright colors and I can see when I'm working with them especially if I drop any on the floor, I'd be able to find them. Now there's another um, brand from Joann's that I tried and they're a clear bead and they will do the same thing. They're in the floral department. They also come in a smaller package, but the clear beads, when they're rehydrating, it looks like there's nothing in the water. And I think it might be a little bit harder with somebody visually who's having a harder time grasping them. Uh, you can still work with them, and they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. I just preferred the colors. 
Now, they start out being real small and tiny, and you can see how little they are here. But after you rehydrate them in water, these were rehydrated about uh, six hours. They turn into like little bouncy little jelly bean ball things. And so you can see how much they expand. They're not exaggerating when they say that they expand six times of what the original uh, bead was. And so you can see why we want to just uh, ship our cooling scarves with the dry beads in it because basically you're, you're shipping water when you do this. But they will be able to rehydrate them once they get them. A couple of words of warning about these uh, beads. As you can imagine, if you have any of these spill on the floor or anywhere around the house, you're just going to be playing pickup for days with these. And the thing that I worry about is that they look inviting. They look like a lot of fun. And plus, these might look like little gel candies. Keep them away from your kids, your grandkids, and your pets. Um, because if they happen to ingest any of these little beads, they're going to swell up in their tummies. Or if they eat these, I don't know what would happen to them if they eat these. But I think you're probably looking at a trip to the ER or your vet for an emergency uh, consultation on that one. So keep them safe. And when you're working on them, put a little pan underneath you, either a cookie sheet or some kind of a pan, so in case that you drop them, they'll come into the pan and not rolling all over your counter. When you're working with these, I want to show you, we've done the measurements for you with figuring out how many of these it takes to go in each one of the pockets of the scarf that you've sewn. So what you're going to do is take a one quarter teaspoon and you're going to scoop your beads up and level them off with your fingers. So you've just got to level and if not level then make it a little scant. Okay, you don't want to scoop a big hump and have a big lump of beads because that's going to be too much for your scarf and when they hydrate they'll over inflate inside of the space that they have and they'll pop your stitches and it'll be a mess. We don't want to do that. So take them, fill that up quarter teaspoon to just a scant teaspoon and then because you're also coordinated you could do this with two hands here. Just slip it right inside of one of the pockets of your scarf and then clip it really good so if you're twisting or turning it you don't have any of these guys falling out on you. So there you go. Once you get those in each of the pockets then the next step is going to be sewing that shut across the top and you're done. Once you finish sewing your pocket shut on your scarf it'll look something like this. You'll have your front tail then you have the one, two, three pockets and the back tail. And these tails are what tie. And you've got the sections sewn shut and the dry beads are inside. So it'll kind of look like there's nothing in there, but you'll know that those dry beads are in there ready to be rehydrated. We are not rehydrating these before we mail them. We're going to mail them when they're dry. So at this point, you're done with your scarf. So we've got the completed scarf. You see it just simply ties around the neck and then the tails hang down. And you can see in our pockets after the beads have been rehydrated how they fill out that pocket. This is just a quarter teaspoon and look how they filled up and filled it in. It feels like one of those old draft stoppers we used to make back in the day. But it has cooling properties very easy to make. My husband wore one out this afternoon while he was mowing the yard and I think we're going to have to make a couple more to keep back at the house. But once you're done making your cooling scarf, go to the website craftingchange.org and go to the project for CareCore Vegas. And all the way to the bottom you will find the uh, button to click for when you tally. And you can also print your care slip to put in this as you mail it, and it will give you the mailing instructions with the address. So thank you for sewing with us. We appreciate everything that you do. And let's get busy and make some of these now, okay?
Thank you. Bye-bye.